Hello everybody. I am here to offer you a wonderful opportunity that people have been asking me about wherever I go. People are asking me, how can we see the same move of God in our country as is happening in the Ukraine? Will you come and do a conference? Will you come and preach in our church? And the invitations are just too many. So that's why I've decided to start a Bible school in every country. So right now we have started one in America. We've started one in uh, France. We've started one in Holland. We've started one in Germany. Now it's time for England. So we're starting a history maker Bible school in, Lo in the city of London from September 25th. So I'm inviting everybody that wants to be a part of this great move of God that God is pouring all, all, all over Europe, that you should come and be a part of this Bible school. It's just a weekend Bible school, one weekend a month. So you don't need to leave your job. You don't need to leave your family. You don't need to leave your church. Just one Saturday in a month. You can do that. Please get in touch with us by contacting, by contacting the telephone and the email on the screen after this program. God bless you and welcome to History Makers Bible School. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is 40 pounds per session. To register, call 0798 114 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you were called for a time like this. Hello and welcome to the program. And in this segment of the interviews with Pastor Sunday Adelaja, who is the senior pastor of the Embassy of God in Kiev, Ukraine, we're still going to continue talking about the different ministries within the church. You heard earlier about how he spoke about the soup kitchen. That's different from the normal soup kitchens as we know it. But, and the fact that the people that come to the soup kitchen go through a process. They go through a cleansing period where they actually take their outfits off wash them and release them to go into the, into the church to, to, be, to be ministered to with the word of God and also from there they go to study you know, Bible teaching lessons, then the soup kitchen, then into other areas, rehabilitation. It's a whole package. He talked about the prison ministry, talked about the orphanage and the work is phenomenal. phenomenal. And you know what, this time around we'll be talking about the other aspects of the ministry. I intentionally decided to just stick to the agenda this way so that we can learn a lot from what he has done and why he's very, very successful. He wrote the book, Pastoring Without Tears, and he said something to me at the end of the last interview. He said the church is built on a structure. He said it is the structure that's sustaining the church, not the pastor. So if he's there or not, the church will still run. And that's where you and I want to be as pastors, so the church can run whether we're there or not. So God bless you as you continue to watch. Welcome again to the program, sir. Thank you. This side of the program, I know the previous one, we talked about uh, facts and figures, the statistics that make it clear so that people out there who just see you on TV say, wow, we got, this man has got the crowd. Maybe he's got a formula in place. And we know the formula is the fact that you have structures in place. And majority of you, of the ministries within the church, are outward looking, yeah. looking, not inward looking. No. So this side of the program, we just want to um, hear from you about you know, the other ministries for you to break it down for the benefit of pastors. Because some pastors, they see you do it, but they don't know. 
They haven't been here, but I pray that God will make it possible for them to be here in the future. So we're going to be talking about the new. We're talking about the new. We're talking about the new commerce ministry. Okay. We have one here. You call the G12 system. What is the G12 system? Well, you know, G12 system is very similar to the you no know, re the renowned, acclaimed G12 uh, cell group system that is from Colombia, but this is not from Colombia. This is different. What happened was that there was a time when our church was 8,000 people, and I was concerned that it stagnated for about a year. We were 8,000 and we were not growing, but yet people were giving their lives. So I wondered, I wondered why this? Why is the church not growing, oh Lord? So I began to pray to God about it. And uh, that was when God spoke to me and said, you know what, you just need to produce more leaders. Then I saw a vision where I saw Jesus in a cloud, and then behind him, his disciples. And then I saw myself, he said, do the same thing. Pour yourself, everything you know, into 12 people, and let each one of them pour themselves into another, each, their own 12 people. And then it, those ones will pour themselves into their own 12 people, and that will, multiplication will be sustained. So I said, oh, wow, I got it. So that was where, before I got to know or get in touch with the Colombia people, that was how I got the idea from. So when you implemented it, what happened? The church exploded, went from 8,000 to 12 to 15,000. Wow, that is serious. So do you still teach this principle? Right yes, there? we use it basically now to disciple people so that you are responsible for 12 people minimum that you disciple and you make into leaders. So we discovered that it's more important to make leaders than to make followers. So we focus now not on using it to bring more people to God, to Christ, but to use them to sustain and develop other people who have come to Christ into being leaders themselves. Wonderful. Then you got this other ministry called the Trust Line. What is the Trust Line? Trust Line is the 24 hours uh, hotline that uh, it's called trust line so that people could trust people they are talking to. So it's uh, our, like our 911. It's like uh, 24 hours hotline where, where people could call in and uh, t tell us, our, our consultants, what their problems are. Then we pray for them, like a prayer line. Okay. We, we pray for them, minister to them, and give them consultation for free. Wow. So we've had maybe <laughs> over maybe half a million people are consulted through that. The trust line? Yes. And they man 24 hours? Yes. This is wonderful. So what kind of people do you get put there? Are they trained by the church? Yes, or they are trained as psychologists and uh, psych uh, psychologists and uh, people who have human relations. And uh, we sustain them and pay them to man the telephone 24 hours. Wonderful. Then you got the Joshua Bible Institute. Yes, that is our the mission. We have in our Bible in our school. I mean, in our church here, Embassy of God. We have thirty schools, if not uh, high schools or primary schools, just thirty different uh, uh, institutions, uh, schools of different directions. So this particular one is the direction that prepares missionary, because we believe that our church, our main trust, is missionary is to be a missionary church. So this is the Joshua Institute that goes to possess the land. That's why they are called Joshua, the Joshua generation. There is full-time school every day, uh, they, you know, Monday to Friday. So how long is the course for? It's just a year. A year. Because we believe in not uh, retaining people in a school for more than a year because then they lose the fire. One year is enough to keep the fire and have enough knowledge to go with. Wonderful. Missionary Center. The Missionary Center is uh, the arm of the church that is uh, in charge of all our churches. We have about 700 churches in Ukraine and outside of Ukraine. And uh, that's why we have a bishop. Even though I'm the, sen I'm the founder and the senior pastor of this church, yet I'm not the bishop of the church. We have a bishop. So I'm just a pastor, but we have a bishop that is in charge. Who is charge. above you? No, he's uh, one of my disciples that I trained f f with the, for the government, for official uh, status, yes. It, it's like the bishop is above. Okay. 
the pastor. But I don't like to be a bishop. I don't like the big titles. Uh, I'm not interested in that. So I trained one of my disciples. Uh, he came also from an alcoholic, but he's a big man now. So he's the one taking care of all the... So his own the direction of the work is to take care of the missionary vision, to start planting new churches, sustain those churches, and look after them. So I don't need to do all that. Amen. Now you got politics. This one, a lot of churches will say we don't do politics. And you don't get a lot of politicians in church. But what, are you, what is the politics ministry doing? Well, it's, um, it's, uh, we have a school of pot uh, politology, they call it, or political science school, where we train our people who want to go into politics. So the, uh, uh, you know, we train them, disciple them, and release them into the political realm to bring the influence of the kingdom of God there. Wonderful. Then it, you know you were sharing with us last time. I, I, I really thank God for your life because it's like the, the, you have solid vision, and I know that if it's left to a human being, you can't run with this kind of with all these visions because it will be hard. But it's got to be God that put these things in your head because so many churches, but you see all these listed ministries, you don't even have them in a lot of churches. So, but I really thank God for your life for that. You know, but. You were sharing with me last time that you, your the ministry started a two political parties from within the church. Yeah, actually three. three uh, okay. we've at least three political parties have been started from the church here. And uh, one of them is the one that is controlling the city of Kiev, uh, the mayor, and 30% of the parliament seat of the state, of the city capital. 30%? Yes. From the church? Yes. Unbelievable. And that is, so and the mayor is from the church as well? Yes. My. So how were you able to, f you know, get them to start these parties and then, you know, get people to support? Because, in like, for instance, in England, a lot of Christians don't even vote. They just sit in church every day. If you call for prayer, for breakthrough, the church is packed. When it's prayer for kingdom come, <laughs> they, do, they don't bother. And yet, they don't even vote. So they just sit there, and so many decisions are made, which is against the church, and everyone is powerless. Well, uh, we used to have the same situation in the Ukraine. To a large extent, it's still like that with other churches. But um, I discovered that if I was going to wait for other churches to come together for something to be done, unity, in the name of unity, let's all come together. They will never come together. They don't have the vision. I discovered that only the man that has the vision has got to do it. So I began to do, uh, take all the responsibility upon myself. Because God told me, take responsibility for the nation. Don't wait for anybody. Don't think that you are not this, you are not that, you are not a citizen, you are not white, you are not... You know, you are not, all, you, all, you, you are sufficient in me, and all your sufficiency are in me. So don't think you are not, you are insufficient in something, or you are incapable of anything. So I began to take responsibility for the whole country, and we began to uh, do everything just from our church, and God is blessing it. And the result we're having, all the churches and all the Christians put together might not be able to have the same result we're having, just because we're proactive. Wonderful. My, that's one other thing I learned from you that when you catch a vision, don't waste your time talking about it. <laughs> just run or with waiting it. for other people to join. Yeah, just run with it. <laughs> God bless you. Arts ministry. Yes, we believe uh, that uh, we cannot change the culture without changing the, the values and the norms and the morals of the society. And the, the, the norm and the moral of the society is mostly being dictated by the culture of the society. When you talk about the culture of the society, you are talking about of the art, you are talking about the folklore, you are talking about the, you know, the, the, uh, the music, you are talking about the, the jokes, the, the mode of life, the lifestyle, all the, So we have art ministry that's talk, that is reaching out to things that people, that people think is part and puzzle, is part and puzzle of uh, the lifestyle here. So they, go, they reach out to theaters, they reach out to circuses, they reach out to opera, no, we call it not soap opera, but opera. opera okay. Dancing, uh, you know. Musical? You know, ballet. Ballet, okay. Ballet, yeah. So, you know, ballet, when they dance, the, the ladies fly and all that. So those are kind of the culture here. And so then they minister to uh, musicians and the entertainment world, everything about art. All the you know, entertainment, art, music. 
So we have all forms of uh, outreaches to those kind of work. Wonderful. I'm really impressed because some months ago, I went to watch a musical in England called uh, The Jesse Boys. It's about a group of musicians in America who formed the group The Jesse Boys. And they sang some very popular songs. And we sat, my wife and I sat in the theater watching this program, this show. And all, they were swearing at different points as part of the act. And we saw that most of the places where they were swearing, it wasn't necessary. The performance was first class. The songs were superb. So there was no need to swear. When you swear, it's like you just messed up the whole show. But to the people sitting there, it was normal. And I thought, so my wife came out and said, God, when are we going to have Christians who would have plays like this and remove all this swearing and make it tidy and neat for family to be able to enjoy? And that's yeah, what those are the alternative way of supply in the society. But we don't just supply the alternatives. We also infiltrate ourselves into the, in the, the uh, existing system so that we could bring the light into darkness. Wonderful. Then you got the youth, uh, the social center. What's the social center, sir? The social center is a department of the church that is supposed to reach out to all the social needs of the society. So they, they reach out to, uh, let's say, the men, the women, the children, uh, the, all the social ills of the society. It's drug addictions, alcoholism, uh, they are the ones that are starting NGOs. Anything we de 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 detect in the society that is not all right, the social department take responsibility to find somebody to take it up and to start an NGO to push for the government to pass a law about that or to change that or that, things like that. Wow. Corruption, you know, security, you know, everything that comes, just anything that's a concern, that is, a, that is a, an ill in the society, we, the social department takes on it. Yeah, because I was at a meeting yesterday <laughs> and I heard people talking about registering NGOs, mm -hmm. and as a result, the local uh, politicians and even the police yes. are beginning to work with them yeah. to deal with those things. Yeah. And um, even there was, there was one in which, uh, I think it was a, it was a lady, uh, she was talking about, uh, you know, setting up a, um, uh, this one of these NGOs to, to affect certain areas. And, and the impact it has had, it has transformed so many lives. And that's why this is this is wonderful. What you're doing is, is really great. <laughs> it's not a church as usual. It's wow. like a, it's like a nation. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. If you're upset about it, do something about yes. it. Yes, you've got to fix it because we are the light of the society of the world, and we are the salt of the earth. So God didn't say wait for government to fix it or wait for the police to fix it. You are the light. So we go fix it. Not just talk about it, preach it. We're not just preaching it. We form a system and a structure that releases people and encourages people and empowers people to see it as their personal responsibility. Not the church doing it, not the church paying for it. We just facilitate. Wow. So tell me, if, for instance, some of these, uh, the big guys, we have the big guys in America, we have the big ones in England, if they, are, if they want to get in touch with you to send some of their leaders over to learn this structure so that they can actually start implementing because these ministries make a lot of money. They make millions of dollars. But in, in actually affecting the nation or the local community, we don't see it. But here, it's everywhere. Well, I don't believe that you have a ministry until you begin to affect your society. You don't have a ministry, you have a club. Wow. Well, yeah, you have a club. The impact and the, the definition of ministry, the impact of your ministry is supposed to be judged, not by how many people gather. Some discotheque gather more people, and any stadium gather more people than any church does. That's not a big deal. Wow. But when you begin, you, but the, your effectiveness must be measured by how much you have turned that society upside down. That is how the disciples were mentioned themselves. These that turned the world upside down have come here. So if you are not turning that society upside down, you are not doing much, really. You might be having a cultural club, a religious club. It's just like the people going to the pub. They go there to get themselves entertained and relieved. And people go to church to get themselves entertained and relieved as well. Serious. Only people use different methods. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Those wow. ones use methods of uh, being high 
on drugs or on uh, alcohol. And we use the method of being high on messages. Oh, that message was great. Oh, what a word. It's like being addicted. We are being high on those things. And then the music, oh, what an anointing. It's just the same addiction. It's being high. We are looking after pleasure. Because we, we are looking after pleasure there. Now we're still looking after pleasure. It's about me, satisfied. Wow, wow, anointed. Ooh, ooh, I feel guru. Nobody cares for the need of heaven. Wow. So, are you, you know, if any of those ministries get in touch to send their leadership around, are you, is your ministry in a position to actually help build them up? Because the hunger is to actually take the whole world. And it's not just Ukraine alone. <laughs> it's, for, it's to equip others to do so. Would the ministry here be willing to actually help on that front? There will be no problem whatsoever. Uh, that's why we started this school in England, the History Makers Bible School. And besides that, we will also be willing to uh, uh, invite people down here and do some uh, more intensive course of training for as many as will be willing to, do, to come. Yeah, because I was actually going to talk about that because what the History Makers is doing is just teach them, prepare them, release them. But then they haven't been here to see what's what on the ground, to even take on some more in-depth teaching. They just moved by the teaching they receive, which is enough fire, but to actually catch the spirit completely, to be able to run with it successfully, you need to be here on the ground to see all these things, uh, to the, see how it works. The Russians have an adage that says that it's better to see once than to hear a thousand times. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Yeah, there's a local saying in, in Africa as well, to that effect. <laughs> that says? There's a local saying that says... Similar to that? Similar to that. It said, you know, to see is far superior to hearing. Yes. <laughs> wow. Then you got the youth ministry, Schemans. Yes. Uh, this, uh, oh, we have different kind of youth ministries, but this particular one you're talking about, Schemans, is the, the youth ministry that is targeting successful young people, the successful youth. So their target is to become successful themselves as young kids from teenage years, become professionals, and then they target professionals like them. And then they take responsibility for, to, to build the new politics in Ukraine, the new business, the new media, the, and all that. They, they're focusing on releasing new uh, professionals that are f devoid of uh, all the f past Russian corrupt past. They want to position themselves as to be the new politicians in the country in the next 10, 20 years and all that. Bless you, sir. <laughs> thank you so much for that. On that note, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you've been blessed by what you heard. And you need to be selfless, just like the man of God just shared with us. God bless you. We'll be back with you soon. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P, 3DW. Registration is £40 per session. To register, call 0798-114-6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www hmbsuk.org Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you were called for a time like this. Hello everybody. I'm here to offer you a wonderful opportunity that people have been asking me about wherever I go. People are asking me, how can we see the same move of God in our country as is happening in the Ukraine? 
Will you come and do a conference? Will you come and preach in our church? And the invitations are just too many. So that's why I've decided to start a Bible school in every country. So right now we have started one in America. We've started one in uh, France. We've started one in Holland. We've started one in Germany. Now it's time for England. So we're starting a history maker Bible school in, Lo in the city of London from September 25th. So I'm inviting everybody that wants to be a part of this great move of God that God is pouring all, all, all over Europe, that you should come and be a part of this Bible school. It's just a weekend Bible school, one weekend a month. So you don't need to leave your job. You don't need to leave your family. You don't need to leave your church. Just one Saturday in a month. You can do that. Please get in touch with us by contacting, by contacting the telephone and the email on the screen after this program. God bless you and welcome to History Makers Bible School.